All right, so your complete blood count. So I do have abbreviations here for a lot of things. So WBC is your total white blood count, and that is simply your total white blood count, the mm -hmm. number of white blood cells you have. Uh, your red blood cell count is similarly your total red blood cell count. Your hemoglobin is grams of hemoglobin per deciliter, and that's going to be an okay value to have even if you have a hemolytic specimen because the machine actually hemolyzes to get there. Oh, yeah. Uh, hematocrit, however, you have to have intact red blood cells. And that's the proportional volume of blood occupied by your erythrocytes. Your MCV is your mean red cell volume or how big your red cells are. So, if you know, are they just right? Are they too small? Are they too big? Uh, microcytes or macrocytes. And then your mean cell hemoglobin is the amount of hemoglobin per red blood cell. And a lot of times that's going to correlate with uh, your chromasia. So are these hypochromatic red cells or is there too much white space in your red cells? But there's a problem with MCH because it's, it's the amount of hemoglobin per red blood cell. It doesn't take into consideration if your red cell is small or if it's big. So if right. you have a big red blood cell, you're going to have more hemoglobin in it and you can get sort of erroneous numbers, which is why you have the mean cell hemoglobin concentration, which then takes into account your red cell size. Okay. So I would say use your MCHC over your MCH Okay. when you're evaluating. Your RDW or your red cell distribu distribution width is basically your variation of red cell size. So s some people, well, you and I, probably have red cells that are about the same size. So your RDW is going to be in that normal-ish range. But if you have people who have really small ones and really big ones, then you're going to have an elevated RDW. Uh, and platelets here is basically, again, your total platelet count. Your MPV is the equivalent of your MCV for your platelets. So how big are your platelets? Oh, okay. And your platelet distribution width is the exact same thing as your red cell distribution width. Like, do you have all small ones? Do you have all big ones? Or a range. Or a range. Okay. Cool. And so the the CBC, what type of uh, the blood comes in a tube? The tube has a, I remember the color tops change, right? What color top are you supposed to do for CBC? Or does it matter? Uh, it's usually a lavender top. Okay. If, except in certain situations, which we'll talk about. Later. Okay. And then do you do the same tube of blood that's used for the CBC? Ideally, the a, a drop or a few drops of that is taken and the smear is made from that? Yes. You're using the same sample to run your complete blood count and to make your, your smear for visual interpretation? Yes. Okay. And lavender is EDTA. EDTA is the, is the chemical in there. Okay, cool. Okay. All right. So I'm a big proponent, as you know from the lymph node lecture, if you listen to that, in that you don't know what abnormal is until you know what normal is. So this is a peripheral blood film from a pathology resident who donated her blood to some machine, uh, you know, control, uh -huh. and then got her own peripheral blood uh, as a thank you present. <laughs> so this is my peripheral blood. Cool. Uh, and you can we have extra special specimens today. That's It's fun when it's your own sample, actually. That's how you know you're meant to be a pathologist, right? It is. And we should have... So Ooh. the circles are your leukocytes. And I know that this is low power. This is about at 200x. And we'll go higher in just a little bit. But those are your leukocytes. And just giving you a general gestalt of about how much leukocytes are normal and low power. And leukocytes, fancy name for white, white blood, blood cell, cells. right? So if you're, if you're a beginner there, that's, that's what we, we call them. And... Then if you look really, really closely, you can see the itty-bitty platelets, which aren't actually cells. They're little fractions of megakaryocyte membranes. So just the tiny specks in the background, huh? And I promise you, I will give you higher power in just a second. And then, again, a low power, but you'll notice that that red blood cell looks a little bit different than the rest in the background. Yeah, looks like a little chunk or something. A it's little... a little fragment. Oh, okay. And so I just point that out in that I know I did not have TTP at the time. <laughs> I didn't have microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. So don't get too terribly upset if you see one or two fragments in your peripheral blood smear. If you start seeing, you know, one or two per high power field, then you start getting upset and start making 
phone calls potentially depending on the clinical scenario. But that can happen in a normal individual, right? Is right. it just like maybe procedural or something or we don't know? It could be procedural. Um, I tend to be a hard stick, so I often end up getting butterfly needles, in which mm. case it, it could be procedural. Um, in real patients that have microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, it could be a like a mechanical heart valve, for mm -hmm. instance, or, you know, yeah, TTP, there are other things, other right? Things. I think that's it's important in all of pathology, right, to know like what abnormal things are, but also when abnormal things don't necessarily mean a pathology for the patient, right? Don't mean the patient is sick, right? And sometimes that's the hardest job, right? Sorting out what's what's an artifact versus what's really something we need to worry about.